Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. We've made the files the instructor uses in this tutorial available for free. Just click the link below in the video details to get these. Welcome to the Advanced Tableau course. Tableau is a leader in the Gartner 2021 Magic Quadrant for Analytics and Business Intelligence platforms. This year's ABI platform functionality included the critical capability areas of manageability, cloud analytics, data source connectivity, data prep, automated insights, data visualization, data storytelling, natural language query, natural language processing, and your standard reporting. This year, there was a particular emphasis on augmented analytics. My name is Andrew Pearson. I'm the founder and managing director of Intelligentsia Limited, a software consulting company based in Hong Kong and Macau. We will start with section one, advancing with Tableau, followed by a section on parameters. Section 1.4 will focus on the level of detail expressions functions. Section 1.6 details spatial functions. Section 1.7 and 1.8 will discuss geospatial functions. This section is rounded out with lectures on advanced filters and table calculations. Section 2, we have lessons on actions, animating your visualization, advanced table charts. Here we have three sections and they include instructions on how to build circular charts, sunburst charts, bump charts, funnel charts, candlestick charts, and Sankey charts amongst others. Sections 2.7, 2.8, and 2.9 on how to build a geospatial dashboard. Finally, section 2.10 will include dashboards that will utilize radial charts. In the last section, there are five exercises that run through everything from building dashboards with animated visualization, LOD expressions, as well as exercises that will include building circular calendar charts, bump charts, and area charts, as well as the final exercise five, in which you have to build a Sankey diagram that will highlight actions. So welcome to the course, and I'll see you in the first session. As one of the fastest growing business intelligent platforms available, Tableau packs a lot of powerful functionalities into its simplified interface. This includes advanced calculations, spatial processing, subsets, and various machine learning procedures that will help elevate your visualization to the next level. This course aims to help you learn and apply advanced functionalities and will guide you every step of the way. Each video lesson includes slides for definitions and additional notes, as well as the recording of the full Tableau procedure. But before you move on to these lessons, please ensure that you are already familiar with the basics of Tableau. Here are a few things to refresh your mind on how the platform works. Tableau is a visual analytics platform founded in 2003 as a result of a computer science project at Stanford that aim to improve the flow of analysis and make data more accessible to people through visualization. It is currently one of the fastest growing data visualization tools and it is powerful, easy to use, and can be easily integrated. Tableau has been recognized as a leader by Gartner for nine consecutive years in its magic quadrant for analytics and BI intelligence platforms. Tableau has a flexible front end and an intuitive interface that visually expresses data by translating drag and drop actions into data queries. The software can connect, blend, and extract data from various sources such as flat files like Excel. It can also connect to different types of databases or live connections, and even get data from the web. Tableau separates the data layer from the presentation layer and makes updating a spreadsheet data source a trivial append to the bottom of your source spreadsheet. Tableau helps simplify raw data to an easily understandable format. In a few clicks, you can create charts and views that are both interactive and shareable. It is easy to learn, such that any Excel user and non-technical personnel can grasp it, but it is still powerful enough to handle complex analytical processes and advanced visualization. If you are still struggling with the basics, you might want to check out our first Tableau course, Tableau Tutorial for Beginners, available on the Simon Says IT website, as well as their YouTube channel.
Now that you're ready, let's start with advancing in Tableau. These are the main sections in this course. The first is Advanced Calculations and Functions. In this initial section, we will recurrently use the Tableau Workspace window and its Calculated Field window to create parameters, LOD calculations, groups, and sets. These functions are useful for creating complex data values and in setting a specific detail level of your data set. You will also learn about spatial processes where you can map out geographical locations. In addition, this section also covers advanced filters and quick table calculations to assist you in making your dashboards more dynamic and user-friendly. The second section talks about improving dashboards, which will focus on improving your visualization techniques and dashboard creation. It contains lessons on how to apply animation to your charts and or graphics, as well as create actions in your dashboard and develop complex Tableau charts. We will also discuss visual analytics best practices under this section and show you the step-by-step -step process of creating a complete geospatial dashboard and marketing dashboard from sample data. The version used for this course is Tableau Public 2021.4.2, while the data sets used are stored in MySQL and Excel. So head on to the next lesson to find out more about parameters. From the beginner Tableau course, we have talked about calculated fields where we indicate a premeditated formula, condition, or static value to be utilized by our visualization. This lets you, as the developer, adjust the depth of your charts, filter out unwanted points, and apply multiple functions to your data. But calculated fields alone can't let the users indicate their specific criteria for those calculations in their dashboard. A user is limited to the filters that he or she sets as well as the values presently available in the field. This can result in limitations in the user's analysis, which can defeat the purpose of effective visualization. Parameters can be a great solution for this situation. According to Tableau's documentation, a parameter is a workbook variable that can be in the form of a number, date slash time, boolean, or string, which can replace a constant value in a calculation, filter, or reference line. Since it is a variable, it holds data, but it will not do anything with the data unless the parameter in the calculated field object or filter is used. Parameters hold user-generated values that can be utilized as controls in an individual view or even in a dashboard. Utilizing a parameter, a user can change measures, dimensions, as well as provide dynamic filters in a report without having to compromise the structure of the original data source. Parameters only exist within the workbook, so they do not change the original data. You can also use it anywhere in a workbook, whether that be as a view or as a dashboard. So how do parameters differ from filters? For starters, Tableau parameters are quicker than filters because they are retained in memory. However, filters ping your data source every time they are used. In terms of coverage, parameters can be used at any place within a workbook while filters are specific to individual sheets or views unless they are added to a dashboard, which then requires further configuration on linking. When choosing values, parameters can only handle a single value, in contrast to filters, which can handle multiple selections. Lastly, parameters can be used in calculations, whereas filters cannot. The parameters shelf is located in the lower half of the Tableau workspace. One thing to be aware of is that this shelf is not visible when there is no parameter available in the worksheet. Let's start by creating a simple static parameter. We're going to use this retail workbook, specifically this tree map sheet, which has the total quantity of orders per category. The first step is to click the drop down menu from the left data pane of the Tableau workspace. On the pop up menu, select Create Parameter. This opens a new window where we can type the parameter name and set its properties. As our first example, let's create a simple field-based parameter that we can use as a filter. In the new window that we've opened, type category parameter as the parameter name. If you wish to insert a comment or a simple explanation for this parameter, you can click on the comment button to show a text editor box where you can input a few lines. 
Since our parameter is just straightforward, let's click the comment button again to hide it. For this first parameter, we are going to configure it to contain the fixed list of product categories from an existing field. The properties in this window let you specify the data type, current value, value when the workbook opens, its display format, and the allowable values. Since we are going to use a dimension, set the data type as a string. Next, let's pull the field and place its values into the parameter. The allowable values setting will specify how the parameters accepts values. You can select from the following options. All. The parameter control is a simple text field. List. The parameter control provides a list of possible values for you to select from. Range. The parameter control lets you select values within a specified range. The availability of these options is determined by the data type. On the allowable values setting, select list, since we are going to take values from a field. This shows another set of properties for creating a list of values. Select the radio button for fixed, then click add values from. This shows the list of data sources available in the current workbook, which expands into a list of field names when selected. Aside from data sources, you can also paste data from the clipboard. In this example, we will select the data source Retail Plus with product category as the field. Once picked, the list of values from the product category field is populated into the list box. You can set a different label for a certain category by typing the new name under the column display as. Now that we have the values, click OK to create the parameter. Since we now have an existing parameter in this workbook, the parameter shelf is displayed. But since we did not connect it to any calculated field or actions, there are no visible changes to the view. To use the parameter, let's create a calculated field that will be used as a filter. This will act as a connector from the user input parameter and the view. Click the drop down arrow from the left pane and select Create Calculated Field. Set its name as Category Filter, then drag the Category Parameter pill into the Calculated Field window. Type the expression Open Square Brackets Category Parameter, closed square brackets, space equals space, open square brackets, product category space open parentheses, enhanced space, e-commerce, close parentheses, closed square brackets. The category parameter should be in violet since it is a parameter, while the field name should be in orange. Make sure that there are no errors before clicking Apply and OK to finalize the new calculated field. Next, drag the category filter pill into the filters shelf. On the filter pop-up menu, select True as its filter value. Then hit Apply and OK. Notice that this automatically filters the tree map into accessories, which was the default value of the parameter. To let users change this selection, right-click on the Category Parameter pill and select Show Parameter in the menu. Once shown, the parameter drop-down list will be included in the right pane. You can click on the arrow down button to the right of its parameter title to either edit the parameter, show slash hide its title, or change its list type. Users can now choose a different value on the parameter to change or filter the tree map. Now that we know the basics of how a parameter works, let's try creating a dynamic parameter that will let users filter the top n from a list. Instead of having to generate a specific list of numbers from 1 to 100 and so on, users should be able to input a random number, which will be used as a filter for the number of items to show. We will use this second worksheet as an example. It currently has the list of all products with a bar and text label for their respective total revenue. Let's create a parameter using the discrete dimension of the blue pill called product in the rows shelf. Right-click the pill and select Filter on the menu. This opens the filter window where we can choose from four different filter tabs. Choose the top tab since we are limiting the data set according to the sorted products by revenue. Select the option by field to take the user-generated number via parameter. The first drop-down is set to top 
while the next dropdown should be a parameter instead of the default 10. To create a parameter from this window, click the second dropdown and select Create a new parameter. This opens the Create Parameter window similar to that of our first example. Set the name of the parameter to top n. Notice that the data type is automatically set as an integer. This is because we created the parameter from the top n filter that always takes in a number. Let's set the current value to 15 and retain the rest of the values if it is not yet selected. We will stick to a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 50. Once done, click OK to create the parameter and get back to the filter window. Double check the rest of the drop down for this filter. The third drop down should be set to the field revenue, and the fourth drop down that contains the aggregation method should be set to sum. Once done, hit apply and OK. Upon creating the filter and parameter, the view is limited to the top 15 products because 15 is the current value of the top end parameter. To let users change this value, we need to show the parameters card. In the parameter shelf, click right on the top end pill and select show parameter. This makes the top end card visible on the right side of the workspace. A slider is used as default since we have set a range of values. Sliding to the leftmost will set the value to 1, while the rightmost is the maximum of 50. You can also change this into a text box by clicking the arrow down button on its card and choosing the type in option. If a user inputs a number that is outside the specified range of 1 to 50, it will revert that value into either 1 or 50. You can also insert the parameter into an object, such as this worksheet title. Double click the title to open the text editor window, set the text cursor to where you want to insert the parameter value, then click the insert button in the upper right and select top N. Once done, hit OK. The title text will now change depending on the parameter input of the user. Aside from using parameters as a static and top end filter, there is a lot more to unpack from this flexible tool. Let's continue by discussing the use cases for parameters. For this example, we will use the same retail data set and modify this existing line chart. We will utilize parameters to create a dynamic date filter wherein users can select between the date ranges of year, quarter, and month. The default format of our line chart here is a single dimension date field found on the columns shelf and a sales measure on the rows shelf. The current date dimension is aggregated to month. In turn, the x-axis of our line chart is also set to the month date aggregation. But what if our users want to show the data by quarter or year instead of months? Let's create a new parameter first to get their input. Left click the arrow down button in the left pane. In the pop-up menu, select Create Parameter, name the parameter as Date Parameter, then set the data type to string since we are only going to use words as the values. Set the value when workbook opens to current value with the allowable values as list. On the list box, type the following values, year, quarter, and finally month. Once the configurations are all done, hit the OK button to create the parameter. Since the date parameter is now available in the shelf, click right on its pill and choose to show parameter. This displays the static text that we populated earlier into a dropdown. Let's change this to a radio button list by clicking the cards arrow down button and selecting single value list. This type of parameter list is best used for displaying options with fewer values like our date example. As expected, no changes are applied since we did not use the parameter in the chart, nor did we link it to a calculated field. So the next step is to create a calculated field that will be a replacement for the current date pill on the column's shelf. Click the arrow down button again on the left pane, but this time select Create Calculated Field. Name the calculated field as date condition. Since the parameter has three options, we will create a condition that will check the parameter value chosen by the user and assign a different calculation for each. The conditional statement that we will use is the if statement. 
If you need a refresher about this topic, you can visit our Tableau beginner course on the topic Conditional or Logical Functions and Operators. Back to the calculated field, type the first if condition, if, space, open square brackets, date, space, parameter, closed square brackets, equals, year in quotation mark, space, then space, str, open brackets, year, open brackets, open, square brackets, date, close square brackets, close brackets, close brackets. When typing the condition, make sure that you use the same letter case format for the word year as compared to the value list of the date parameter. When the year option is selected, the calculated field will take the year value of the date field, then convert it into a string data type, since this will be used as a date dimension. For the next line, type else if space open square brackets date space parameter close square brackets equals quarter in quotation marks space then space str open parentheses year open parentheses open square brackets date close square brackets close parentheses close parentheses plus space space q in quotation marks space plus space str open brackets quarter open brackets open square brackets date close square brackets close brackets close brackets this second condition will test the date parameter if it has the exact value of quarter if so it will take the year value of the date and concatenate it with the quarter value both converted into strings for the third condition press enter on the keyboard to move to the next line then type in else if space open square brackets date space parameter close square brackets equals month in quotation space then space str open brackets month open brackets open square brackets date close square brackets close brackets close brackets space plus space space in quotation marks space plus space str open brackets year open brackets open square brackets date close square brackets close brackets close brackets this line will concatenate the month value of date and the year value with a space inserted between them but only if the date parameter is set to month for the last line of this expression type end to finalize the whole calculated field make sure that there are no errors and hit apply and OK since we now have our calculated field which acts as our link to the parameter let's place it on the column shelf to apply the changes in the visualization drag the date condition pill and place it on the columns shelf next remove the green month of date pill from the same shelf now that we have all of the parts ready let's test the parameter choose quarter on the parameter card Notice how the chart changes from the initial single point value of the sales aggregated by the year 2017 to four point lines separated by quarter. The line further expands when you select the month radio button. Now that we've tried changing the value of a dimension, let's use parameters to swap measures as our next example. We will use this highlight table, which has the product category pill on the rows shelf and has the sum of sales as its measure. We would like to create a parameter that will let the user change between the different measures of total sales, average sales, and total orders. As always, the first step is to create the parameter. Click the drop down arrow from the left pane of Tableau Desktop and select Create Parameter. Name it as Measure Parameter with a data type of string. Next, type in the values. Since we are still going to use words to describe each parameter option, choose Allowable Values as List. Type in the values Total Sales, Average Sales, and Total Orders. Once all values have been inputted, hit OK to create the parameter. Next, show the parameters card. Right-click on the Measure Parameter Pill and select Show Parameter. The drop-down should contain the three values that we typed in earlier. Now let's create the calculated field. Click the drop down from the left pane again, but select Create Calculated Field. Set the name as Measure Condition. 
This time, we're going to use the case conditional expression to test the value that the users choose and add the appropriate fields or measures for each. For the first line, type case, space, open square brackets, measure, space, parameter, close square brackets. This means that we are testing the contents or the values of the measure parameter. On the next line, type when, space, total sales in quotation, space, then space sum, open brackets, open square brackets, sales, close square brackets, close brackets, from the expression itself. If the parameter was equal to the exact text of total sales, it will use the measure sales with sum as the aggregation method. On the second line, type when, space, average sales in quotations, space, then, space, average, open brackets, open square brackets, sales, close square brackets, close brackets. This will take the same measure of sales, but aggregated using average. For the last line, type when space total orders in quotations, space, then space COUNTD, open brackets, open square brackets, invoice, space, number, close square brackets, close brackets, space, end. This would be triggered only when the chosen value is equal to total orders. The measure that's going to be applied is the count of distinct invoice numbers. Most conditional statements still have an else statement as a catch error process before end, but since they are only using three possible options, these three expressions will suffice. Hit apply and OK to create the calculated field. Next. Drag the measure condition pill from the left data pane and place it into the same position as that of the sum of sales pill to replace it. Do it both for the color option and the label configurated pill. Once done, we can now check if our parameter and calculated field is working as intended. On the parameter drop down, select average sales. This should change the numeric values in the table where the nest Canada category has the greatest average sales of 770.5. Next, shift to total orders. The product category of apparel should have the most amount of orders, which is 15,777. Since we also have a title inserted in this view, we can insert the measure parameter in its text. Double click on the title to open the edit title window. Highlight the text total sales, then click the insert button in the upper right. Choose parameters.measure space parameter in the pop-up menu. To further accentuate that this part is dynamic, let's change the font color to the inserted parameter into a shade of blue. Highlight the less than parameters.measure space parameter greater than and set the font color to a light blue. Once done, click apply and OK. Once applied, the title now shows the measure chosen from the parameter. In analyzing data, there are certain use cases where you will most likely need to look at your source in different granularities to reach a proper conclusion. This can be tricky in Tableau as a basic visualization might be limited to a single level of data for the entire view. The level of detail, LOD, expressions can let you alter how specific or how broad a visualization or data set can be. LOD expressions give you even more control over the level of granularity you want to compute on a calculated field, making your charts more dynamic and presenting a lot more information to be used for analysis. LOD expressions enable users to apply aggregations that have different granularities compared to that of the current visualization. For example, your default view can be a country level map, but you need tooltips that indicate the country's most populated city. In this instance, you can use LOD expressions to create a different granularity within the tooltips calculated field. Another application is if you wanted to show two measures with different levels on the same view. 
you might want to show a bar chart for franchises with top sales along with average sales per state. We will discuss three types of LOD expressions, fixed, include, and exclude. Let's differentiate each and look at examples on how to apply them starting with fixed. Fixed LOD expression computes a value using the specified dimensions without reference to the dimensions in the view. Notice that it does not refer to the current dimensions used in the view, meaning it is independent or is not affected by the dimension on the columns or row shelf. You can use fixed to perform calculations at a more granular level than that of the current chart. Let's try creating a fixed calculation in this view. Here, we are using a data set that contains a list of stores in Colorado, along with their total sales, credit sales, and total customers. In this first view, we have a table which has the county, city, and their total customers. Notice that the total customer number is up to the city level since it is affected by the dimension used. So, if we remove the city from the rows shelf, the numbers will be summarized to county level. Let's put the city pill back on the rows shelf and create a new calculated field called Fixed Total Customers. Click the drop-down arrow in the left pane and select Create Calculated Field. Type the expression, curly brackets, fixed, space, colon, sum, open brackets, open square brackets, total customers, close square brackets, close brackets, close curly brackets. An LOD expression will always be in this format. The whole expression is enclosed in curly brackets. The first word would be one of the three types, fixed, include, or exclude, then followed by zero or more dimensions that you want to fix. Include or exclude from the expression, then a colon, and lastly, the aggregated measure. Since we first want to show the grand total of customers, we do not need to indicate any dimensions in this expression. Hit Apply and OK to create the field. Once created, double-click the Fixed Total Customers in the Data Pane to automatically add it to our existing table. The expression only results in the value of 706,999 for the whole column. This number is the grand total of customers for the whole data set. Even if we remove the city dimension on the row's shelf, the fixed numbers are not affected. Let's edit the fixed total customers and add a dimension to the LOD. Click right on its pill and select edit. Place the line cursor before the colon and type open square brackets county close square brackets. Then hit apply and OK. Notice that the numbers have now shifted to show the total per county. Now let's put back the city pill on the rows shelf. Each fixed total customer value will still have the same number as long as they are under the same county. The second type of LOD is called include. Include level of detail expressions compute values using the specified dimensions in addition to whatever dimensions are in the view. The key word to remember from this definition is the phrase, in addition to. Using the include LOD, you can add dimensions into the expression even if the said dimensions were not included in your charts. This also means that, unlike fixed, include is affected by the dimensions in the view. For this example, we're going to use the Super Sales dataset from Tableau and modify this bar graph which has the sum of sales per product category. We will use the include function to change the measure used into average sales per region. The default graph only has product category as its dimension, but using the load include, we can incorporate region during the calculation. Click the dropdown in the left pane and select create calculated field. Set the name as average sales by region then type in the expression average open brackets open curly brackets include space open square brackets region close square brackets colon space sum open brackets open square brackets sales close square brackets close brackets close curly brackets close brackets since we are calculating the average of the sum of sales per region 
the aggregation used inside the LOD was still the sum of sales, then we've applied the average function outside of the LOD's curly brackets to complete the expression. Next, click Apply and OK to create the field. From the data pane, drag the average sales by region pill and place it directly on top of the sum of sales pill in the row shelf to replace it. The axis has now decreased from the millions range into hundreds of thousands. This is because we have increased the granularity of the measure using the region dimension. Finally, we have exclude. Exclude is the polar opposite of include since it declares dimensions to omit from the view level of detail. Thus, it is also affected by the dimensions used in the view. You can't use exclude in row level expressions since there would be no dimensions to ignore but it can be used on the view level or other grouped calculations. When using exclude, Tableau automatically uses the ATR aggregation to indicate that the expression is not actually being aggregated and that changing the aggregation will have no effect on the view. Exclude is also useful in application to percent of total and difference from overall average calculations. Let's duplicate the first sheet example we used for fixed LODs so we can also discuss the difference when using both expressions. Click right on the fixed sheet and select duplicate to generate a copy. Then create a new calculated field called exclude with the expression open curly brackets exclude space open square brackets city close square brackets colon space sum open brackets open square brackets, total customers, close square brackets, close brackets, close curly brackets. Once done, hit apply and OK. Notice that the output of our exclude is the total sum of customers on the county level. This is because we only indicated the expression to ignore city. Since both county and city has been used in the view, the expression is still left with the county level. This is in contrast to the fixed total customer which is not affected by any of the dimensions you add into the table. If you wish to recreate the output similar to that of the fixed LOD, we need to add the other dimension in the calculated field. Click right on the Exclude Pill in the Data Pane and select Edit. Put the line cursor before the colon, then type comma open square brackets county close square brackets. After typing, click Apply and OK. The output value is now equal to that of the fixed expression since we have already indicated the two dimensions in our exclude calculation. When working with LOD expressions, it is essential to also understand how the order of operations work in Tableau. The fixed LOD sits below context filters and above dimension filters. This is similar to what we have observed from our examples where the fixed expression was not affected by the dimensions. So, if you have added the dimension as a context filter instead, this can now change the resulting values of the fixed expression. Similarly, fixed and the rest of other types also take into consideration other operations above it, such as extract filters, which are only applicable when you are using Tableau extracts as a source, and data source filter that you have applied in the data source page. Include and exclude, on the other hand, is positioned below the dimension filter. So if you add new dimensions and change the filters selected in a dimension field, this can directly affect the resulting value of the LOD expression. Level of detail also has its own limitations as listed below. Level of detail expressions that reference floating point measures can behave unreliably when used in a view that requires comparison of the values in the expression. Level of detail expressions are not shown on the data source page when referencing a parameter in a dimensionality declaration also use the parameter name and not the parameter value. When data blending, the linking field from the primary data source must be in the view before you can use a level of detail expression from the secondary data source. Let's try creating a fixed calculation in this view. Here, we are using a data set that contains a list of stores in Colorado, along with their total sales, credit sales, and total customers. 
In this first view, we have a table which has the county, city, and their total customers. Notice that the total customer number is up to the city level since it is affected by the dimension used. So, if we remove the city from the rows shelf, the numbers will be summarized to county level. Let's put the city pill back on the rows shelf and create a new calculated field called Fixed Total Customers. Click the drop-down arrow in the left pane and select Create Calculated Field. Type the expression, hit Apply and OK to create the field. Once created, double-click the Fixed Total Customers in the data pane to automatically add it to our existing table. The expression only results in the value of 706,999 for the whole column. This number is the grand total of customers for the whole data set. Even if we remove the city dimension on the row's shelf, the fixed numbers are not affected. Let's edit the fixed total customers and add a dimension to the LOD. Click right on its pill and select Edit. Place the line cursor before the colon and type open square brackets county close square brackets then hit apply and OK. Notice that the numbers have now shifted to show the total per county. Now let's put back the city pill on the rows shelf. Each fixed total customer value will still have the same number as long as they are under the same county. The second type of LOD is called include. For this example we're going to use the super sales data set from Tableau and modify this bar graph which has the sum of sales per product category. We will use the include function to change the measure used into average sales per region. The default graph only has product category as its dimension but using the load include we can incorporate region during the calculation. Click the drop down in the left pane and select create calculated field. Set the name as Average Sales by Region, then type in the expression, click Apply and OK to create the field. From the data pane, drag the Average Sales by Region pill and place it directly on top of the Sum of Sales pill in the row shelf to replace it. The axis has now decreased from the millions range into hundreds of thousands. Finally, we have Exclude. Let's duplicate the first sheet example we used for fixed LODs. Click right on the fixed sheet and select Duplicate to generate a copy. Then create a new calculated field called Exclude with the expression. Once done, hit Apply and OK. Notice that the output of our Exclude is the total sum of customers. If you wish to recreate the output similar to that of the fixed LOD, we need to add the other dimension in the calculated field. Click right on the Exclude pill in the data pane and select Edit. Put the line cursor before the colon, then type comma open square brackets county close square brackets. After typing, click Apply and OK. The output value is now equal to that of the fixed expression since we have already indicated the two dimensions in our Exclude calculation. Working with qualitative or categorical data lets you easily create groups and subsets of values within a workbook. There are two ways to create a customized collection of values in Tableau, groups and sets. Groups let you manually combine related members in a field or dimension. Let's try creating a group from this set of accessory names. To create a group, first we need to select the members or values that we need. On this list, let's select Candy Skull Mask, Facial Mask, Gas Mask, Jester's Mask, and Superhero Mask. You can select multiple members by holding Control while selecting a different value. Once selected, click the paperclip icon to create the group. Notice that the list of masks was now shortened and the values from before were grouped under Row 1. This is because we have created the group by selecting the values inside the chart. In the data pane, the new group is also tagged with a paperclip icon and named Accessory Name Group by default. To rename the group, click right on its pill and select Edit Group. In the new window, set the field name as Full Face Mask, 
then click Apply and OK. This new group can be utilized and placed on the shelves or the marks card. If you wish to remove the group, click right on the Charts grouped value and select Ungroup. Another way of creating a group is by selecting the original field from which you want to extract a group in the data pane. In this case, we're going to use Accessory Name. Click right on its pill and select Create Group. Let's call this group Animal Face Props, then select Beak, Cat Nose, Dog Nose, and Pig Nose in the list box. Make sure to hold Control to select the other members. Once the values are highlighted, click Group. The selected members are combined into a single group where their combined names are used by default. Click right on the created group and select Rename on the pop-up menu. Set the name as Animal Face Props. In the bottom part of the Edit Group window is an option to include Other. This lets us group all remaining or non-group members in an other group. You can utilize this feature to highlight certain groups or compare specific groups against everything else. Click Apply and OK to finalize our second group. Groups can be useful for highlighting certain members or related marks in a chart. You can also use it to correct data errors or combine dimension members from the data source. Since all groups are found inside the workbook only, the original data source will not be changed. On the other hand, sets are custom fields that define a subset of data based on some conditions. There are two types of sets, fixed and dynamic. Fixed sets act similar to groups. Their members are manually selected and do not change even if the data source is updated. Fixed sets, however, can be based on a single dimension or multiple dimensions. Let's create a fixed set from the same bar chart used earlier. Under Eyewear, select Pilot Shades, Pixel Shades, and Retro Shades. Then click the overlapping circle in the menu and select Create Set. This opens a new window where we can indicate the set name and add or remove members. Type Shades as the name for this set. Then click OK to create the set. The new set can be seen in the data pane with the overlapping circle icon to indicate that it is a set. Next, let's try creating a dynamic set. The members of a dynamic set can change if the underlying data is changed or updated. Dynamic sets also let you set a specific condition, such as taking in values that contain keywords, grouping values that are top 10, or you can base the set from a formula. But a drawback on this type of set is that it can only be based on a single dimension. In the same sheet, click right on the accessory name pill and select Create Set. The Create Set window has three tabs for choosing values. General has the list of all values under the dimension. You can select manually from the list, use all, or create a custom value. Condition lets you create a set using a field or formula. Top lets you create a set based on either the top or bottom list of members according to their respective measure value. For this example, let's set the set name as Shades2 and create the list of members using the Condition tab. Select the radio button for By Formula, then type in Contains, open brackets, open square brackets, accessory space name, close square brackets, comma, open quote Shades, close quote, close parentheses. So if a member has the keyword shades, it will be automatically included in the set. Even if the data sources are changed and inserted with new accessory names, it will always look for accessories that have the word shades in their names and then add them to the set. At the same time, old members which were removed in the data source will also be removed from the set automatically. Hit apply and okay to create the set. Let's display this set as a filter. Click right on the Shades 2 pill and select Show Filter. The filters card default value shown is only in or out. In for members inside the set and out for members outside the set. The in slash out mode makes it easier to compare members in the set to everything else. So when we choose in, we can only view accessories 
which have the word shades in their name, but if we choose out, all the other accessories will be shown. You can also opt to show the members inside of the in-out value. On the filters shelf, click right on the pill and select show members in set. This lets you display all the members which satisfy the set's condition. Another way of choosing which values to include in the view is through set actions. A set control is a worksheet card that is very similar to a parameter control or filter card. It gives your audience more control over their analysis of their visualization. To show a set control, click right on the Shades 2 pill and select Show Set. This creates the set control card on the right side of the workspace above the filter. Clicking on its drop down arrow lets you customize how it is displayed. Let's change this to a multiple value drop down. Do take note that set controls are only available for dynamic sets since fixed sets menu are not meant to be changed. Sets can also be combined. Combining the sets enables you to compare members as well as compare cohorts of the data. A combined set can contain either the combination of all members, just the members that exist in both, or members that exist in one set but not another. In order to combine sets, they must be from the same dimension. Thus, sets made of product category cannot be combined to sets made from accessory names. In this new worksheet, let's create two sets and combine them. The first set will be top five accessory names based on sales. Click right on the accessory name pill and select create set. Set the name as top accessory sales. Then go to the top tab and choose the radio button for buy field. Configure it to take top five using the field sales and sum as the aggregation. Once done, click OK. Next, let's create a set for the bottom five accessories. Click right on the accessory name again and select Create Set. Indicate Bottom Accessory Sales as the name. Then select the top tab and choose the Buy Field option. Set it to take bottom five using the field sales with sum as the aggregation method. Once done, click OK. To combine the sets, select the sets by holding Control while clicking its pill. Once the sets are selected, click right and select Create Combined Set. This opens a new window where you can set a new name for the combined set and select how they are going to be combined. Let's type the name Top and Bottom Accessory Sales. The methods for combining sets are displayed in the window using Venn diagrams. The first one acts as a union as it takes all members even if they have unique values. The second one is the intersect of both sets. Only shared members or similar members will be shown in the combined set. The third and fourth option are the unique values on either the left set or on the right set, meaning it only takes members that are only found on the other set and will not display similar members. Since we are showing top and bottom, let's choose the first option, which is to show all members in both sets. Hit OK once done. Upon creating the combined set, Drag it into the filter shelf to reflect its members in the chart. The output chart contains 10 accessories in total, with eyeglass accessories having the top sales, while face props has the least sales. How do groups differ from sets? First off, groups are only manual or fixed. They have a specific list of manually selected members, which cannot be changed by the audience of your charts. Sets, on the other hand, can be either fixed or dynamic. It saves you time from having to check every change applied on your sets from each data source update. Groups can take in both dimension and measures, but sets can only handle dimension fields. In terms of processing, groups are processed like dimension filters, while sets take more priority as they are processed before dimension filters. Groups can't be combined, while sets have various methods for combination. Lastly, sets can also be used on expression or operations, while groups cannot. In this new worksheet, let's create two sets and combine them. The first set will be top five accessory names based on sales. 
Click right on the accessory name pill and select create set. Set the name as top accessory sales. Then go to the top tab and choose the radio button for buy field. Configure it to take top five using the field sales and sum as the aggregation. Once done, click OK. Next, let's create a set for the bottom five accessories. Click right on the accessory name again and select Create Set. Indicate Bottom Accessory Sales as the name. Then select the top tab and choose the Buy Field option. Set it to take bottom five using the field sales with sum as the aggregation method. Once done, click OK. To combine the sets, select the sets by holding control while clicking its pill. Once the sets are selected, click right and select Create Combined Set. This opens a new window where you can set a new name for the combined set and select how they are going to be combined. Let's type the name Top and Bottom Accessory Sales. The methods for combining sets are displayed in the window using Venn diagrams. The first one acts as a union as it takes all members even if they have unique values. The second one is the intersect of both sets. Only shared members or similar members will be shown in the combined set. The third and fourth option are the unique values on either the left set or on the right set, meaning it only takes members that are only found on the other set and will not display similar members. Since we are showing top and bottom, let's choose the first option, which is to show all members in both sets. Hit OK once done. Upon creating the combined set, Drag it into the filter shelf to reflect its members in the chart. The output chart contains 10 accessories in total, with eyeglass accessories having the top sales, while face props has the least sales. Over the past few years, navigation apps like Waze and Google Maps have become widespread and have proven to be very helpful to motorists. The apps inform a driver of the best possible route, the one that should take the shortest amount of time while avoiding the heaviest traffic. These apps make good use of geospatial data analysis to track and collect locations of drivers, of roadblocks and accidents, as well as keeping in mind weather conditions. But what is geospatial data? According to Wikipedia, Geographic data or geospatial data is data that has implicit or explicit association with the location relative to Earth. So, anything that has a location component can be called geospatial data. It can be your current location, the weather conditions in your city, the area of a mall, or even the routes you take on a daily basis. Tableau's spatial functions allow users to perform advanced spatial analysis and combine spatial files with data in other formats like text files or spreadsheets. Since version 10.2, it can also read spatial files such as shapefiles, map info tables, KML, keyhole markup language files, topo JSON files, GeoJSON files, and Esri file geodatabases. You can also insert your own customized location instead of using the built-in geocoding data. Let's start by using this CSV, which contains X and Y coordinates of four malls. Drag it to the Tableau Public Start page to import the file. Notice that Tableau does not automatically recognize the X and Y axis as geographic data. Instead, they are numeric columns. When using geographic data, it is important to assign geographic roles to fields. Based on Tableau's documentation, a geographic role associates each value in a field with a latitude and a longitude value. When you assign the correct geographic role to a field, Tableau assigns latitude and longitude values to each location in that field by finding a match that is already built in to the installed geocoding database. This is how Tableau knows where to plot your locations on the map. In this case, our centroid X and centroid Y should be assigned as longitude and latitude respectively. To do so, click the column's drop-down arrow, select Geographic Role, Longitude. The globe symbol verifies that the geographic role has been assigned. 
Do the same for the y-axis. The yields with proper names, such as state, city, and country, are automatically assigned with geographic roles in Tableau, but for axis, such as centroids from this file, you will need to assign it manually. Now that we have the geographic roles assigned, you can create a map chart from the four mall points. On a new sheet, select both centroid X and centroid Y in the data pane and click Show Me. Choose the symbol map from the map options. The output by default shows a single point because of aggregation. To remove it, click the Analysis menu and uncheck Aggregate Measures. This removes the average aggregation and displays the individual points on our map. Let's add labels to distinguish each point. From the data pane, drag Name field and place it on the label under the Marks card. You can also create a new field to convert these points to spatial objects. To do so, we will use the Make Point function. This function converts data from latitude and longitude columns into spatial objects. First, click right on a blank space of the data and select Create Calculated Field. Name it as Mall Points. Then type in the expression Make Point, open brackets, open square brackets, centroid space Y, close square brackets, comma, open square brackets, centroid space X, close square brackets, close brackets. You can also drag the field from the data pane into the expression box to save you time from typing. When using this function, you must have two numeric columns, one for Y or latitude and one for X or longitude. Y axis should be indicated first for this function to work properly. Hit Apply and OK. Let's clear the chart first to see how this function works. Click the Clear Sheet button or press Alt and Shift and Backspace as a shortcut. Double click the mall points to show them in a map. Same with our first output, four points are shown in the map. But instead of having two different fields, you can simplify them into one and automatically convert them to a spatial object. This can be useful for datasets which have numerous fields such as access points. At the same time, you can now use this spatial object point for other functions. Place the name field on the labels card to indicate mole name for each point. There are three types of spatial objects in Tableau. Point, line, and polygon. Point is a data which has the X and Y axis values like our mole A, B, C, and D. Line would be two or more connected points. Lines are visible when you trace a bus route or when you measure a distance between two locations. A line also has a specific starting point and ending point. Polygons are comprised of lines that are connected to form a closed two-dimensional area. It has a measurable perimeter. State borders and land area shapes are considered as polygons. Next, we will create a route starting from mall A to mall D. This means that we should have lines between mall A to mall B, mall B to mall C, and so on until it reaches mall D. The data set used for this example already has the next mall coordinates. Mall D will not have a next mall coordinate since this will be the last stop. First, we need to supply a spatial point for the next mall coordinates. Create a new calculated field and name it as next mall point. In the expression box, type the make point function in quotations, make point, open parentheses, close parentheses. Then from the data pane, Drag next mall y into the expression, placing it after the open parentheses. Then type a comma symbol after the next mall y field. Once done, drag the next mall x field into the expression box and place it after the comma. Make sure there are no errors on your expression before hitting Apply and OK. Now that we have two reference points, let's create a line. To create a spatial line in Tableau, we need to use the make line function. It generates a line between two points. Create a new calculated field and name it as mall root. Then type in the expression make line open brackets open square brackets mall points close square brackets comma open square brackets next mall point close square brackets close brackets. Once you are done typing, click apply and OK to create the next spatial field. Next, we need to insert the line into the chart. From the data pane, drag mall root into the map and place it into the add a marks layer window 
that pops up. The output would be a second layer of line about the mall points that we have earlier. The marks card will now have two separate configurations for each layer. You can individually change the color or add details and tooltip for each layer. For example, let's use the mall points marks card and set the color to red. We can also calculate the distance between two points by using the distance function. It returns distance measurements between two points in a specified unit. Distance supports four units, meters, kilometers, miles, and feet. In the Tableau workspace, create a new calculated field called distance between malls. Then, in the expression box, type in distance, open brackets, open square brackets, mall points, close square brackets, comma, open square brackets, next mall point, close square brackets, comma, in quotations, meters, close brackets. The unit's keyword must be enclosed either in single or double quotes. Hit OK to create the calculated field. Let's insert this data into the tooltip of the mall root marks card. Drag the distance between malls pill and place it on the tooltip card of the mall root. Hovering over the line will show the distance between each malls in unit or meters. To make the text specific, click right on the distance between malls pill in the mark shelf and then select format. This opens the format window, which lets us configure how the tooltip text will look. Under the pane tab with subsection default, click the drop down for numbers. Select numbers, open square brackets, custom, close square brackets. Set the decimal places to zero, then go to the suffix text box and type in meters. You can check the resulting format by hovering over each line. Next, let's try the buffer function. Buffer returns a circular shape with a radius determined by the distance and unit values defined in the calculation. This function will only work with a point spatial object, so it is not available for lines and polygons. The radius can be meters, kilometers, miles, and feet. On the map, let's create a radius or trade area for each mall. First, create a new calculated field called mall radius. In the expression, type in buffer, open brackets, open square brackets, mall points, close square brackets, comma, five, comma, kilometer in quotation marks, close square brackets, then hit apply and OK. The output of the buffer is a circular area with the mall point as center. Drag the mall radius from the data pane and place it on the Add a Marks layer window. The output shows four blue circles on each mall. To assign a color for each mall area, drag Name into the Colors card. Let's lower the opacity by navigating to the Mall Radius Marks card color opacity. Set the opacity to 25% so that each mall point will still be visible. Finally, we have the Area function. It returns the total surface area of a spatial polygon, meaning line and point is not supported by this function. The units that can be used are same to that of distance and buffer functions. Let's use this function to add the radius area on our tool tip. First, create a new calculated field called mall radius area. In the expression, type in area, open brackets, open square brackets, mall radius, close square brackets, comma, feet in quotation marks, close brackets, then hit apply and OK. Once done, drag the mall radius area pill into the tooltip card. Since this shows numbers in a different unit, let's edit the text. Click the tooltip card to open the edit tooltip window. In the new window, insert the word FT after the mall radius area text. Then hit OK. Hovering on each radius will display the result of our area function. Let's start by using this CSV, which contains X and Y coordinates of four malls. Drag it to the Tableau Public Start page to import the file. Notice that Tableau does not automatically recognize the X and Y axis as geographic data. Instead, they are numeric columns. In this case, our centroid X and centroid Y 
should be assigned as longitude and latitude respectively. To do so, click the column's drop-down arrow, select geographic role, longitude. Do the same for the y-axis. Now that we have the geographic roles assigned, you can create a map chart from the four mall points. On a new sheet, select both centroid X and centroid Y in the data pane and click show me. Choose the symbol map from the map options. The output by default shows a single point because of aggregation. To remove it, click the analysis menu and uncheck aggregate measures. This removes the average aggregation and displays the individual points on our map. Let's add labels to distinguish each point. From the data pane, drag name field and place it on the label under the marks card. You can also create a new field to convert these points to spatial objects. To do so, we will use the make point function. This function converts data from latitude and longitude columns into spatial objects. First, click right on a blank space of the data and select create calculated field. Name it as mall points then type in the expression, hit apply and OK. Let's clear the chart first to see how this function works. Click the clear sheet button or press alt and shift and backspace as a shortcut. Double click the mall points to show them in a map. Same with our first output, four points are shown in the map. But instead of having two different fields, you can simplify them into one and automatically convert them to a spatial object. At the same time, you can now use this spatial object point for other functions. Place the name field on the labels card to indicate mall name for each point. Next, we will create a route starting from mall A to mall D. The data set used for this example already has the next mall coordinates. First, we need to supply a spatial point for the next mall coordinates. Create a new calculated field and name it as next mall point. In the expression box, type the make point function in quotations, make point, open parentheses, close parentheses. Then from the data pane, drag next mall y into the expression, placing it after the open parentheses. Then type a comma symbol after the next mall y field. Once done, drag the next mall x field into the expression box and place it after the comma. Make sure there are no errors on your expression before hitting Apply and OK. Now that we have two reference points, let's create a line. To create a spatial line in Tableau, we need to use the Make Line function. Create a new calculated field and name it as Mall Root. Then type in the expression Make Line, open brackets, open square brackets, Mall Points, close square brackets, comma, open square brackets, next mall point, close square brackets, close brackets. Once you are done typing, click Apply and OK to create the next spatial field. Next, we need to insert the line into the chart. From the data pane, drag mall root into the map and place it into the Add a Marks Layer window that pops up. The output would be a second layer of line about the mall points that we have earlier. Now, let's try to apply the spatial functions that we have learned from the past lessons. First, we will create a basic airline route map. The data set that we are going to use is this San Francisco Flights Excel file. It has the X and Y coordinates of both the airplane's origin and its destination, its route tag, airline code, and count of total flights. We only have X and Y coordinates. And our fields are already numeric, so there is no need to assign geographic roles, as we will create the points later. Click the Sheet 1 tab to create a new chart. Since we are going to visualize the airplane's route, we will make use of two points, the start of origin X and Y in our data set, and the end or destination X and Y. Once the start and end point has been created, we will connect them using a spatial line. As the first step, click right on any blank area of the data pane and select Create Calculated Field. Name the new field as Origin Point. Then input in the Make Point function. In the expression box, type Make Point, open brackets, open square brackets, Origin Y, close square brackets, comma, open square brackets, Origin X, close square brackets, close brackets. Once the calculation has been validated, hit Apply and OK. 
To check if we have plotted the coordinates correctly, double click the new field called origin point in the data pane. It has the equal and globe symbol, which marks it as a calculated spatial object. Double clicking the field will automatically create a chart that is the best fit for the data type, since this is a spatial point that we derived. Tableau automatically created a symbol map based on the coordinates. As you can see from the marks card, the aggregation applied by default is called collect. The collect aggregation combines the values in the argument field in which null values are ignored. For this data set, points which are located in the same place are aggregated using the collect method. So instead of showing two duplicate points, it is collected to one. Do take note that this method is only available for spatial fields. To remove this aggregation, navigate to the Analysis tab and uncheck Aggregate Measures. Now that we are working with individual points, let's change the Marks option to a shape and change the icon as well. Click the drop-down on the Marks card and select Shape. I would like to use a custom icon that I saved in my computer as a shape for each point. To add your own shape, save your designs under Documents, My Tableau Repository, Shapes. Here we created a folder called Custom and saved a PNG image of an airplane which has a transparent background. You may use this custom icon in Tableau by clicking the Shapes card, choosing more shapes in the menu, and navigating to the Shape palette or the folder that you've created. Since we only have one shape in Custom, hit Apply and OK to show the symbol on our chart. Next is to create the destination point. Create a new calculated field called destination point. Type in the expression make point open parentheses open square parentheses destination y close square brackets comma open square brackets destination x close square brackets close brackets. Once done hit apply and OK. Drag the destination point pill from the data pane and place it on the Add a Marks Layer window. Since most of our points overlap, some origin points were now hidden under the destination point layer of the map. You can rearrange the layers by moving the Marks card for origin point and placing it above the destination point on the Marks card. In this part of the workspace, you can also show or hide a layer by clicking the I button besides the layer name. Each layer has its own marks card, so you can easily configure how each layer will look. Let's set the destination point mark to a shape, then click the colors card and set it to red. Configure the opacity to 20%. Finally, set the shape as an X. Having multiple layers also enables the Layer Control button on the map. Click the Layers icon located below the search icon on the left side of the map to open it. The layer control shows all available map layers in the current sheet, and it also lets you lock and hide slash show individual layers. After creating our start and end point, it's time to connect them into a line. Click the drop down arrow on the data pane and select Create Calculated Field. Name it as Plain Root, then type the expression Make Line, open brackets, open square brackets, origin point, close square brackets, comma, open square brackets, destination point, close square brackets, close brackets. Hit apply and OK once done. Now that the line has been calculated, drag the plain root pill and set it as a new map layer. This creates a curved line from the origin point up to the destination point. Click size card of this layer and set it to the second lowest setting, then change the color opacity to 10% so other lines and points can still be visible. Next, add text to the tooltip of our created line. Drag the root tag pill and place it into the plain roots tooltip card. Do the same for the total flights count pill. Aside from the marks, you can also configure how the base map layer should look. Click the map menu on the upper ribbon and select map layers to open the map layer pane. Under Background Style drop-down, you can choose between Light, Normal, Dark, Streets, Outdoors, and Satellite. Let's set this to Normal. 
you can lower the opacity of the base map by increasing the washout. Under Map Layers, you also have the option to add or remove specific layers in the map. For example, if you are working with data sets that deal with land elevation, you might opt to enable the terrain layer. Or if you are analyzing a local map for ideal travel locations, you might choose to show the points of interest layer. Do note that some map layers are only visible at specific zoom levels. If a map layer is unavailable at your current level of zoom, it will appear grayed out. Since we are working with country and state level data, we will leave the map layer configuration as it is. Let's add a filter to minimize the lines in our view. Our data set is focused on flights to and from San Francisco, so we can add filters that either show flights from San Francisco or to San Francisco. Create a new calculated field called route filter. We will utilize the route tag to check if they are going to or from SFO. Type in the expression if space left open parentheses open square parentheses root tag close square parentheses comma three close parentheses equals SFO in quotations space then space from San Francisco in quotations space else space to San Francisco in quotations space and this expression looks for the SFO indicator on the first three letters of the root tag if found, it will tag from San Francisco, but if not, it will tag as to San Francisco. Click Apply and OK to finalize. Click right on the newly created field and select Show Filter in the pop-up menu. Now you can limit the view to routes from or to San Francisco. The points with airplane shows the origin airports, while those with an X shows the destination airport location. For the rest of this geospatial charts lesson, see part 2, 1.8. For our second example, we will use a CSV file that contains places of worship in the U.S. The data set contains the name, zip code, state, country, and X and Y locations for each church. Since the field names for country, state, and zip are in proper naming format already, the geographic roles have been automatically assigned by Tableau. Using this data, we will create a map chart with two layers a filled map for each state, and a symbol representing each location. Let's start by creating a new map. Click the Sheet 1 tab to open the Tableau workspace. Under the Marks card, set the drop-down to Map. Next, drag the State Pill from the Data Pane into the Detail card. Notice that no values were mapped in the chart, and that there were 55 unknown locations based on the State field. To fix this, click the 55 Unknown label and choose to edit locations. Our state was not mapped properly because the country was not indicated. To do so, navigate to the country slash region dropdown and select the radio button for from field. Set this to country using ISO as the code. Once done, you can now check the state slash province tab if all of its members have been recognized. Those with unrecognized names will be marked with red fonts on the matching location. Hit Apply and OK to set our state and country. Since the geographic fields have been matched, a filled map for country and state has been generated. Notice that the country pill has been automatically placed into the detail card. This is to ensure that each state location has been mapped to the correct country since we are using keywords instead of coordinates. You can also add additional details such as city and state by including more fields on the details card. But for this example, state and country will suffice. Let's hide the title and give the chart more space by clicking right on the title and choosing Hide Title. Since we are only looking at US locations, let's zoom into the US area by using either the scroll button on the mouse or the plus button on the map controls. Let's lock onto this portion of the map by right-clicking a blank space inside the map and selecting Map Options on the menu. Uncheck the Allow Pan and Zoom function. This hides the zoom buttons and disables the use of the mouse scroll button while the cursor is inside the map area. Let's change the background map to a dark theme 
navigate to Map, Background Maps, and select Dark. Next, let's add more context to this filled map layer. Drag the state pill from the data pane and place it on the label card. Then let's add a measure to set the color. Drag the attendance pill from the data pane and place it into the colors card. Then click on the arrow down button of the sum attendance card and choose to edit colors. Let's change the color palette to a gradient of gray. Hit apply and OK once the color has been set. Then hide the sum attendance card. Looking at the output of our first layer, it is evident that the state of Texas has the greatest number of active attendees in its places of worship. Hovering over the state shows a tooltip which by default contains all the dimensions and measures used to generate this layer. In this case, we have country, state, and sum of the attendance. Let's proceed with our next layer. First, create the point by combining the X and Y coordinates. Create a new calculated field called location points, then type in the expression make point open brackets, open square brackets Y, close square brackets comma, open square brackets X, close square brackets, close brackets. Hit apply and OK once verified that the calculation is valid. Next, drag the location point pill into the map under Adam Mark's layer, then remove the aggregation under analysis, disable the aggregate measures function, then set the location's points marks card to a shape. Once done, click the size and set it to the smallest size available. Then set the shape as a star. To make this layer stand out, we will change the color based on the subtype of the religion. Drag the pill subtype and place it in the colors card. Then drag the subtype card, which acts as a color legend, and place it below the marks card to save space. From the output of our second layer, we can see that the Christian religions has the most places of worship in the United States next to Buddhism. And most places are concentrated on the eastern side of the country, especially near coastlines. Now, let's try to apply the spatial functions that we have learned from the past lessons. First, we will create a basic airline route map. The data set that we are going to use is this San Francisco Flights Excel file. Click the Sheet 1 tab to create a new chart. Click right on any blank area of the data pane and select Create Calculated Field. Name the new field as Origin Point. Then input in the Make Point function. To check if we have plotted the coordinates correctly, Double-click the new field called Origin Point in the data pane. Double-clicking the field will automatically create a chart that is the best fit for the data type, since this is a spatial point that we derive. As you can see from the marks card, the aggregation applied by default is called Collect. To remove this aggregation, navigate to the Analysis tab and uncheck Aggregate Measures. Now that we are working with individual points, Let's change the Marks option to a shape and change the icon as well. Click the drop-down on the Marks card and select Shape. I would like to use a custom icon that I saved in my computer as a shape for each point. To add your own shape, you may use this custom icon in Tableau by clicking the Shapes card, choosing More Shapes in the menu, and navigating to the Shape palette or the folder that you've created. Since we only have one shape in custom, hit apply and OK to show the symbol on our chart. Next is to create the destination point. Create a new calculated field called destination point. Type in the expression. Once done, hit apply and OK. Drag the destination point pill from the data pane and place it on the add a marks layer window. You can rearrange the layers by moving the marks card for origin point and placing it above the destination point on the marks card. In this part of the workspace, you can also show or hide a layer by clicking the I button besides the layer name. Each layer has its own marks card, so you can easily configure how each layer will look. Let's set the destination point mark to a shape, then click the colors card and set it to red. Configure the opacity to 20%. Finally, Set the shape as an X. Having multiple layers also enables the 
Layer Control button on the map. Click the Layers icon located below the search icon on the left side of the map to open it. The Layer Control shows all available map layers in the current sheet and it also lets you lock and hide slash show individual layers. After creating our start and end point, it's time to connect them into a line. Click the drop down arrow on the data pane and select Create Calculated Field. Name it as Plain Root, then type the expression, hit Apply and OK once done. Now that the line has been calculated, drag the Plain Root pill and set it as a new map layer. This creates a curved line from the origin point up to the destination point. Click Size Card of this layer and set it to the second lowest setting, then change the color opacity to 10% so other lines and points can still be visible. Next, add text to the tooltip of our created line. Drag the Root Tag Pill and place it into the Plain Roots tooltip card. Do the same for the Total Flights Count Pill. Create a new calculated field called Root Filter. We will utilize the Root Tag to check if they are going to or from SFO. Type in the expression. This expression looks for the SFO indicator on the first three letters of the root tag. If found, it will tag from San Francisco. But if not, it will tag as to San Francisco. Click Apply and OK to finalize. Click right on the newly created field and select Show Filter in the pop-up menu. Now you can limit the view to routes from or to San Francisco. The points with airplane shows the origin airports, while those with an X shows the destination airport location. Filters limit the data used for our visualizations in Tableau. They can help us focus on a subset of data, as well as remove unnecessary outliers, reduce the size for faster load times, and organize data based on predefined conditions. We have already learned how to easily show dimension filters and parameters on a sheet or a dashboard, but we can do a lot more in Tableau by using different types of filters and we'll see how they affect each level of data. Tableau has six types of filters executed in the same order from top to bottom. Extract filters, data source filters, context filters, dimension filters, measure filters, and table calculation filters. First, let's talk about extract filters. Tableau has two types of connections when connecting to data sources, live and extracts. As discussed in the beginner course, extracts are saved subsets of data that you can utilize to improve performance when using large data sets. Extract filters limits the saved data that was extracted from the original live connection. Clearly, the type of connection used in the workbooks should be set to extract in order to use this filter. In addition, extract filter is not available on Tableau Public. Data source filters limit data on the data source level. You can easily add this type of filter from the data source page. Data source filters are useful for restricting the data and removing unnecessary rows before using them on the worksheet or in calculations. Similar to extract filters, it also minimizes the data for faster processing and works on both live and extract connections. Most of the time, data source filters are used to restrict the data that users can see and download whenever you publish a workbook or a data source. Publishing or data source will let you set access permissions such as which users or groups can use your workbook or data source. On this data source page in Tableau Public, we are going to add a data source filter that will only accept customers who applied for a credit card within 2019. To add a data source filter, click the Add Label on the upper right of the window. This opens the Edit Data Source Filters, where we can add, edit, and remove pre-existing filters. If you have created any global filters beforehand, it will also be shown here. Click Add to create a new one. Next, select the field where we will add the filter. Since we are filtering the date of each customer application, choose the field Date of Membership. Once selected, click the OK button. Since we are working with a date field, a list of date ranges is presented. This list will change depending on 
the type of field you use for the filter. Let's choose to filter by years and select 2019 from the general list. Hit OK once done. Upon adding a data source filter for date of membership, the filter count also increased by one. Context filters are discrete priority filters that are processed before any dimension slash measure filters and parameters. This type of filter is especially useful if you already have a lot of filters applied in your Tableau workbook. Let's show how context filters differ from the dimension and measure filters that we usually use. In this sheet, we have visualized the top 10 customers according to their total credit PHP. It currently has three dimension filters on the filter's shelf, name, gender, and civil status. To limit the top 10, the name pill is filtered by top field based on the sum of total credit PHP. Everything looks fine until we select a different value on any filter card. Let's try to choose male on gender. Notice that only two customers are now showing instead of 10, even though we have the name filter that limits top 10. This is because filters are all independent by default, and each worksheet takes into consideration all the dimension filters that are applied on its shelf. In this example, the data source is currently limited to top 10 credit and gender equals male and shows all civil status available. So male customers, which were not marked as top 10, were not shown, resulting to only two records that fit all filter criteria. If you want to show top 10 for any gender value, you need to indicate a context filter. To apply a context filter, simply click right on the gender pill that is on the filter shelf and select Add to Context. Upon adding the field as context, its pill also changed its color to gray. A gray field on the filter shelf indicates a context filter. This gray pill will always be on the top to signify that it is always processed first. So in this shelf, the data is filtered according to the gender first, then applied with top 10 name. Since the name filter is now dependent to the gender, we will always see 10 records or 10 bars. Dimension filters are the categorical or qualitative fields that we placed on the filter shelf. Categorical values are always discrete, so filtering them will either include or exclude specific values. To add a dimension filter, drag any blue pill to the filter shelf. On the customer age sheet, drag the field gender into the filter shelf. This automatically opens the filter window where we can choose from four tabs General, Wildcard, Condition, and Top. General tab lists all values where you can select or deselect values using the check boxes. Wildcard lets you define a string pattern to filter on. Condition enables you to set rules or expressions to filter by. Finally, Top can set a formula that computes the data that will be included on the view. Measure filters are the quantitative fields that we place on the filter shelf. Since measures are numeric, this type of filter will need a range of values to add as a limit. In the same customer age sheet, drag the field total credit PHP into the filter shelf. Instead of the filter window that we've seen from the dimension earlier, the pop-up window prompts us to select either all values an aggregation method or an attribute. Let's select Average, then hit Next to set more configurations. On the next window, we can choose from four types of quantitative filters, range of values for setting both the minimum and maximum allowable values, at least for including values that are greater than or equal to the specified number, at most for including values that are less than or equal to a specific number, and special for filtering null, non-null, or all values in the field. In this sheet, let's set the average total credit PHP to at least 10,000. Hit Apply and OK once done to apply the measure filter. Table calculation filters is the bottom level filter from the list, so any changes from higher level of filters 
will also reflect on the output from this filter. From the name itself, this filter has a table calculation. To add a table calculation filter, you simply need to drag a copy of the table calculation pill into the filter's shelf. In the sheet age pi, we have the table calculation of percent of total applied in the CNTD open brackets ID close brackets pill. You can verify that a pill has a table calculation applied to it because it has a triangle symbol by its name. Press control key on your keyboard and drag the copy of this pill into the filter shelf. This opens a dialog box for filtering measure that we have seen earlier. As mentioned, this window will vary depending on your type of field. For this filter, let's select Special and choose Non-Null Values. Hit Apply and OK to create the filter. Table calculation filters are on the bottom of the order of operation, so other filters will take priority in processing. On this sheet, the age filter on the shelf will be processed before the table calculation filter that we created. If you are working with fields that can be hierarchical, it can be beneficial to apply a cascading type of filter in your worksheet. Let's look at how it affects this filled map, which has the number of refugees per country. Notice that we have three geographical fields used as filter, geo-region, geo-subregion, and country name. Even if we filter the geo-region card to show Asia and Pacific only, the map is affected by the geo-subregion and country name still has the list of all subregions in the data set regardless of the region. As we can see from its drop down, Central Europe and South America are still in the list even if they are not under the Asia and Pacific region. This only proves that by default the filters are independent of one another. Let's create cascading filters by enabling all relevant values. Click the arrow down button on the geo subregion card and select only relevant values. Do the same for the country name card. Notice how the amount of values under the geo subregion card has decreased. Enabling only relevant values removes the values which are not related or connected to the current filter, which is Asia and Pacific region. The same is also applied to the country name. Countries outside of Asia Pacific were now removed from the list. Cascading filters function lets you guide end users on filtering views or dashboard. Instead of getting lost on a long list of values, you can minimize the options that a user can choose from and limit it to applicable values. To add a data source filter, click the Add Label on the upper right of the window. Click Add to create a new one. Next, select the field where we will add the filter. Since we are filtering the date of each customer application, choose the field Date of Membership. Once selected, click the OK button. Since we are working with a date field, a list of date ranges is presented. This list will change depending on the type of field you use for the filter. Let's choose to filter by years and select 2019 from the general list. Hit OK once done. Upon adding a data source filter for date of membership, the filter count also increased by one. In this sheet, we have visualized the top 10 customers according to their total credit PHP. It currently has three dimension filters on the filter's shelf, name, gender, and civil status. To limit the top 10, the name pill is filtered by top field based on the sum of total credit PHP. Everything looks fine until we select a different value on any filter card. Let's try to choose male on gender. Notice that only two customers are now showing instead of 10, even though we have the name filter that limits top 10. If you want to show top 10 for any gender value, you need to indicate a context filter. To apply a context filter, simply click right on the gender pill that is on the filter's shelf and select Add to Context. A gray field on the filter's shelf indicates a context filter. This gray pill will always be on the top to signify that it is always processed first. So in this shelf, 
the data is filtered according to the gender first, then applied with top 10 name. Since the name filter is now dependent to the gender, we will always see 10 records or 10 bars. To add a dimension filter, drag any blue pill to the filter's shelf. On the customer age sheet, drag the field gender into the filter's shelf. This automatically opens the filter window where we can choose from four tabs, general, wildcard, condition, and top. General tab lists all values where you can select or deselect values using the check boxes. Wildcard lets you define a string pattern to filter on. Condition enables you to set rules or expressions to filter by. Finally, top can set a formula that computes the data that will be included on the view. To add a table calculation filter, you simply need to drag a copy of the table calculation pill into the filter's shelf. In the sheet age pi, we have the table calculation of percent of total applied in the CNTD open brackets ID close brackets pill. Press control key on your keyboard and drag the copy of this pill into the filter shelf. This opens a dialog box for filtering measure that we have seen earlier. As mentioned, this window will vary depending on your type of field. For this filter, let's select Special and choose Non-Null Values. Hit Apply and OK to create the filter. Table calculation filters are on the bottom of the order of operation, so other filters will take priority in processing. On this sheet, the age filter on the shelf will be processed before the table calculation filter that we created. As discussed in the last video, a Tableau pill which has a triangle sign in its name means that it has an existing table calculation. But what exactly are table calculations? And how do they differ from calculated fields? A table calculation is a transformation you apply to the values in a visualization. Simply put, this is the calculation that you put into the chart or table. Since they can only calculate values which are on the chart, values that are filtered out from the view are not considered. Table calculations have several advantages. They easily apply advanced calculations without having to code each syntax. Tableau's interface guides you when creating quick table calculations, unlike calculated fields, which need familiarization with numeric functions and expressions. They can be used as calculated fields, you can save time by converting it into a calculated field to use the applied calculations on other shelves of the workbook. Achieves good results using efficient processing. Since Tableau computes it on the aggregated chart level, quick table calculations take less time to load. The biggest difference between a table calculation and a calculated field is their level of scope. Table calculations are based on the values which are already aggregated in the view. On the other hand, calculated fields are more granular as they rely on data source values. They also differ on where they can be stored. Table calculations live on the view's shelf, while calculated fields are available in the data pane and are counted as a new column. In order to successfully create our own table calculation, we need to understand how specific components affect the output. Let's compare the process to a Sudoku game. The goal in this game is to fill the grid so that each row, column, and 3x3 three three block, or no net, contains all the digits from 1 to 9 without repeating. Its total sum should be 45 for each direction and group. So when deciding for a value that you will put in a cell first, you will need to look at the different directions. Is the number unique for this row? At the same time, is the number unique for this column? When applying table calculations, Tableau also takes the direction in consideration through the form of addressing. Addressing fields will determine if the table calculation will be applied across or down. So calculations will go either from left to right or top to bottom. Back to our Sudoku board, each 3x3 three three grid has thicker borders indicating that it is one no-net or group. 
Numbers must also be unique for each group or no net, and should also be equal to the total sum of 45. No net groups each cell on a 3 by 3 basis. Tableau also considers the grouping or scope through partitioning. Partitioning fields break the view up into multiple subviews or subtables. The table calculation is applied to these marks within each partition. A partition can group the values either by table or the whole view, by pane or each row slash column, and finally by cell, which is the smallest level of detail for table calculations. Let's look at how these components apply to table calculations and observe which tools can affect our output. As a first example, you're going to create a quick table calculation for this retail 2021 sales data set. Its first view is the text table, which has the dimension section in the rows shelf and invoice date aggregated by quarter on the column shelf. The measure used for the values is the sum of invoiced amount USD. A quick table calculation can only be applied to continuous measure values that are placed in the shelves. So if we click right on the green measure pill of sum of invoiced amount USD, the function add table calculation and quick table calculation is visible. But if we click right on any blue pill on the columns and rows shelf, the function is not shown, signifying that it is not applicable for these dimensions. Observe how the numbers change as we apply a quick table calculation to invoiced amount USD. Click right on its pill and select quick table calculations. The quick table calculation menu shows a list of predefined table calculations that can be applied to your current measure and layout. Those in gray are not available for the measure. Choose percent of total to quickly apply the table calculation. Quick table calculation lets Tableau automatically decide the partitioning field and the addressing field based on the measure and the current layout slash structure of the view. So choosing this option does not let you set additional configurations upon application, but you can change them in the edit window later on. Upon applying the table calculation, the values change from the numeric integers into percent values. It is crucial to remember that table calculations will replace the original set of numbers in your view. If you want to check the output versus the original measure, place the measure pill into the view. Drag invoiced amount USD from the data pane and place it into the values portion of the table. You can also use this method to check if you have correctly applied your table calculation. Let's add totals to check how the addressing for percentage of total has been calculated. Click the Analytics tab and drag totals into the table. Add a grand total for rows, then do the same for columns. Since we applied percent of total, the total value which has 100% determines the direction or addressing of the calculation. In this case, the 100% is on grand total, which means the calculation has been partitioned on the section level using a cross or left to right as the direction. You can edit the quick table calculation by clicking right on the sum of invoiced amount pill that has the triangle symbol and choosing edit table calculation. This opens the table calculation window where we can set the calculation type, compute using specific dimension, level of detail, and show or hide calculation assistance. Calculation type has the list of table calculations you can apply to the selected measure. In this sales example, we can choose from difference, percent difference, percent from, percent of total, rank, percentile, running total, and moving calculation. We do not have the option for year to date or year over year because our data set only has sales within a single year, 2021. The checkbox Compute Total Across All Pages is available if you have a dimension placed on the page shelf. Compute Using lets you choose the direction slash addressing and partitions based on the architecture of the view or table. The quick table calculation we applied earlier was automatically set to Table Across as shown by the yellow highlighter or calculation assistance, the percent of was calculated across each individual section. Choosing a different 
addressing and partition, for example, let's choose table down, we'll change the outcome of percent values as computes by column per quarter from top to bottom. Each type will have different calculation output, so make sure to double check which function best suits your requirements or desired outcome. But what if you want to select the specific fields to use as partition and address? In this case, you can choose the specific dimensions on the list. Setting a field on this configuration will tell Tableau to compute only within this specific field. For example, let's deselect the quarter of invoice date and check the section field. The calculation assistance changes from row to column. The calculation percent of total will now look at the total invoiced amount of all sections, then compute the percent contribution sales of each section. Scrolling to the bottom of the text table, also allows the 100% grand total. The At the Level option is only available when you select specific dimensions in the Table Calculations dialog box. And when more than one dimension is selected in the field immediately below the Compute Using options, that is, when more than one dimension is defined as an addressing field. For example, let's check the quarter of invoice date again so that our specific dimensions are more than one. Now that we have two dimensions, the options we can choose from are either deepest, quarter of invoice date, and section. Deepest specifies that the calculation should be performed at the level of finest granularity. This is the default option. In this table, our finest level of granularity would be per section cell. So the calculation percent of total will take all cells into consideration from all sections through Q1 to Q4. The 100% value should be located in the lower right cell of grand total. At the level quarter of invoice date sets the granularity per quarter. Same as our quick calculation from the start, it calculates the percent of each quarter per section. Finally, choosing at the level section will calculate the percent across the whole table again because section is our lowest dimension level of granularity. You also have the option to set a sort order for the calculation. By default, this has been set to specific dimension, but you can also select custom to choose a different field to sort from in either ascending or descending order. Finally, the last checkbox lets you show or hide the calculation assistance. As mentioned earlier, it is the yellow highlight in our text table which shows the scope and direction of the calculation. As a first example, you're going to create a quick table calculation for this retail 2021 sales data set. Its first view is the text table, which has the dimension section in the rows shelf and invoice date aggregated by quarter on the column shelf. The measure used for the values is the sum of invoiced amount USD. Click right on its pill and select quick table calculations. The Quick Table Calculation menu shows a list of predefined table calculations that can be applied to your current measure and layout. Choose Percent of Total to quickly apply the table calculation. Quick Table Calculation lets Tableau automatically decide the partitioning field and the addressing field based on the measure and the current layout slash structure of the view. So, choosing this option does not let you set additional configurations upon application but you can change them in the edit window later on. Upon applying the table calculation, the values change from the numeric integers into percent values. It is crucial to remember that table calculations will replace the original set of numbers in your view. If you want to check the output versus the original measure, place the measure pill into the view. Drag invoiced amount USD from the data pane and place it into the values portion of the table. You can also use this method to check if you have correctly applied your table calculation. Let's add totals to check how the addressing for percentage of total has been calculated. Click the analytics tab and drag totals into the table. Add a grand total for rows, then do the same for columns. Since we applied percent of total, the total value which has 100% determines the direction or addressing of the calculation. In this case, the 100% is on grand total, 
which means the calculation has been partitioned on the section level using a cross or left to right as the direction. You can edit the quick table calculation by clicking right on the sum of invoice to mount pill. That has the triangle symbol and choosing edit table calculation. This opens the table calculation window. The quick table calculation we applied earlier was automatically set to table across as shown by the yellow highlighter or calculation assistance. The percent of was calculated across each individual section. Choosing a different addressing and partition, for example, let's choose table down, will change the outcome of percent values as computes by column per quarter from top to bottom. Each type will have different calculation output, so make sure to double check which function best suits your requirements or desired outcome. To understand how other table calculation types work, head to the next video. To gain further understanding of table calculations, let's try to apply other types of computation. First, we will take a look at running totals and running average. In this example, we are going to use the same retail sales data set from the previous video. This second view has a line chart made up of invoice date in the column's shelf and the sum of invoice amount USD in the row's shelf. Each marked label contains the total sales for each month within 2021. Let's create a running total to visualize the trend of accumulated sales. First, copy the green pill of invoiced amount USD by holding control on your keyboard and placing the copy beside the original one. This creates two rows of identical line charts in our view. Let's set the color to a light orange for the second chart to avoid confusion. We will apply a table calculation to the copied pill and explain how the computation works by comparing it to the original marks value. Click right on the second green pill and select Add Table Calculation. In the new window, set the calculation type as Running Total with the method Sum. For Compute using Option, we only have three available selections. Table Across, to calculate the running total across the months. Cell which will not have any difference to the first chart as each cell would be aggregated by the month value, and specific dimensions, where we can only choose month of invoice date since it is the single dimension placed in the view. We can choose either table across or specified dimensions since it will just use the same addressing field that is invoice date. Notice that the calculation assistance also shows successive numbers enclosed in square brackets in each mark. This shows the sort order that the running total calculation will follow. A running total calculation aggregates values cumulatively in a partition. It can do this by summing values, averaging values, or replacing all values with either the lowest or highest actual value. Since we selected the sum option earlier, each value is added to the previous value. It will take the first value add it to the second value, then their sum will be added to the third, and so on and so on. If you wanted to specify a different field for sorting the calculation, you can indicate a field using the custom sort order option. Using running total and moving calculation also enables the option to add secondary calculation. This function lets you create another table calculation on top of the first one. Let's leave this option unchecked for now and apply the running total calculation on the chart by closing the window. Since our label for the second line chart is still set to the default sum of invoiced amount USD, replace it with a copy of the pill with table calculation to show the correct numbers. Hold control on your keyboard and drag a copy of the green pill with the triangle symbol and place it directly above the green pill set for the label. Now that we have the correct numbers, let's check how it turned out. The first mark is 460,241, since it is the first month in our data set and has no previous sales to precede it. The second mark is the sum of 460,241 and 322,247, which is the total sales for February amounting to 782,488. This continues to the end of our year 
which shows the total sales of 5,001,956. Aside from some, there are three other methods for running total calculation. Average, minimum, and maximum. Click right on the green pill with the triangle icon and select Edit Table Calculation. Replace the Sum method and choose Average instead. Notice how the line changed accordingly. Close the window, then change the pill for our labeled card. Hold Control on your keyboard and create a copy of the green pill with the new calculation applied. Now we have the running average values of our second line chart. Instead of the cumulative sum, the running total averages the values of the current versus previous mark. Let's compare the numbers to the first line chart and look at how the values are calculated. The second mark resulted to 391,244 because it was the average of the sales volume 460,241 and 322,247. The third mark resulted in 422,100 since it is the average for three months, so sales from January to March were accumulated then divided by three. Next. Remove the label for the second chart by right-clicking the pill and choosing Remove. Then click on the Y-axis of the second line chart and select Dual Axis to combine both lines. Once the dual axis has been applied, click right on the right Y-axis and apply Synchronize Axis. This aligns the axis of both measures and lets us compare the values. The output for running average provides a good baseline for comparison of total values per month as it shows the average amount for each mark. For this dual axis line chart, we can see a significant dip in sales during the months of February, May, November, and December. It would be best to compare this trend to other years to see if it is a seasonal trend or if there are things that should be improved in the retail business. Now, for our next example, we are going to apply percent difference from calculation to this COVID-19 case count data set, which recorded new positive cases from 2020 to 2021. In this sheet, we have a simple line chart where the blue line indicates the total count of new cases per month in 2020, while those in red are new cases in 2021. We're going to indicate the percent difference calculation through the point labels on each month. Click right on the green pill in the marks card and select add table calculation. In the new window, set calculation type as percent difference from. A percent difference from table calculation computes the difference between the current value and another value in the table as a percentage for each mark in the visualization. For this type of calculation, you need to consider the current value and the value from which the difference should be calculated. So for this example, we need to compare the total count for each month side by side. January 2020 is going to be compared to January 2021, February 2020 versus February 2021, and so on. Since we need to point out the fields for addressing and partitioning, select specific dimensions for the compute using option. Check both year of report date and month of report date. Since we selected all dimensions, this indicates that the whole table will be in scope. Next, drag the year of report date and place it above month to set the order of the direction. This way, Tableau will check if it's a different year first before looking at the month. When you order the fields in the specific dimension section of the table calculation dialog box from top to bottom, you are specifying the direction in which the calculation moves through the various marks in the partition. Upon using specific dimensions, the at the level configuration has been enabled. Let's set this to year of report date. Since we are comparing values between the two years, the calculation should be performed in this level. The at the level configuration lets us fine tune the specific area where the calculation should be applied. This is necessary for a specified dimension, configured charts because these types of visualization do not usually have aligned visual structures and calculations unlike text tables that can be easily computed using specific directions. Back to our percent difference from calculation, it is also essential to indicate a relative to field. Here we can choose from either previous, next, first, last, or specific year value. 
Previous calculates the difference between current value and previous value. Next calculates difference of current versus next value. While first and last calculates the difference between current value or the first and the last within the partition. Since we are comparing new COVID cases by year, we will set this as previous. So 2021 can be compared to 2020, but 2020 will not have a percent difference from label because it does not have a previous year within the recorded data set. Lastly, let's retain the sort order to specific dimensions. Close the window to finish the table calculation. As we can see from the resulting percent of difference in our labels, 2021 has a whopping 197,242% increase compared to January 2020, which was the early stage of the pandemic. We can see a marginal negative decrease of negative 8% when comparing the months of November, but cases still increased by 26% in December. Let's create a running total to visualize the trend of accumulated sales. First, copy the green pill of invoiced amount USD by holding control on your keyboard and placing the copy beside the original one. This creates two rows of identical line charts in our view. Let's set the color to a light orange for the second chart to avoid confusion. We will apply a table calculation to the copied pill and explain how the computation works by comparing it to the original marks value. Click right on the second green pill and select Add Table Calculation. In the new window, set the calculation type as running total with the method sum. For compute using option, we only have three available selections, table across, cell, and specific dimensions, where we can only choose month of invoice date since it is the single dimension placed in the view. We can choose either table across or specified dimensions since it will just use the same addressing field that is invoice date. Since we selected the sum option earlier, each value is added to the previous value. It will take the first value, add it to the second value, then their sum will be added to the third, and so on and so on. If you wanted to specify a different field for sorting the calculation, you can indicate a field using the custom sort order option. Using running total and moving calculation also enables the option to add secondary calculation. This function lets you create another table calculation on top of the first one. Let's leave this option unchecked for now and apply the running total calculation on the chart by closing the window. Since our label for the second line chart is still set to the default sum of invoiced amount USD, Replace it with a copy of the pill with table calculation to show the correct numbers. Hold control on your keyboard and drag a copy of the green pill with the triangle symbol and place it directly above the green pill set for the label. Now that we have the correct numbers, let's check how it turned out. The first mark is 460,241. The second mark is the sum of 460,241 and 322,247, which is the total sales for February, amounting to 782,488. Aside from sum, there are three other methods for running total calculation. Average, minimum, and maximum. Click right on the green pill with the triangle icon and select Edit Table Calculation. Replace the sum method and choose Average instead. Notice how the line changed accordingly. Close the window, then change the pill for our label card. Hold control on your keyboard and create a copy of the green pill with the new calculation applied. Now we have the running average values of our second line chart. Let's compare the numbers to the first line chart and look at how the values are calculated. The second mark resulted to 391,244 because it was the average of the sales volume 460,241 and 322,247. Next, remove the label for the second chart by right-clicking the pill and choosing Remove. Then, click on the Y-axis of the second line chart and select Dual Axis to combine both lines. Once the dual axis has been applied, click right on the right Y-axis and apply Synchronize Axis. This aligns the axis of both measures 
and let's just compare the values. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the files the instructor used in this tutorial and follow along, click over there. And click over there to watch more videos on YouTube from Simon Says It.